this one. Emptying the punch bowl. And so, uh, that's what I was talking about at the end of class last time. So the, the shape of the punch bowl is circular. And so, when you, but when you cut a slice, it's, it's uh, going to be a cylinder, a circular cylinder, which will, they'll get smaller as you go down according to a circular function, right? According to a circular function. So that radius is, what is that radius in terms of the equation of that circle? x squared plus y squared equals 25. What is that radius? From there to there. In terms of x squared plus y, in terms of this circle, what is the radius? What's that? She said it's x. Do you agree with that? That's what it is. It's the x-coordinate of this point. So it's this point right here. The radius is the x-coordinate. Right? Because you're, you're going, how far are you going from the y-axis out to the curve? Right? So that's the x. So when we do pi r squared h, we're really doing pi x squared. And what is h here? It's the height of our cylinder. It's not square root of anything. The height of the cylinder. Delta y. Okay, so the volume of the pancake slice is pi x squared delta y. So we know we have to get it in terms of y. So what is x squared in terms of y? Well, it's according to this the circle, right? So what is x squared in terms of y? 25 minus y squared. So that's the volume of the pancake. Volume of the pancake is pi times 25 minus y squared delta y. How are we going to get the work? Then the work is going to be uh, the weight times the, the weight of each layer. So a typical, a, a little amount of work, right? So we're doing a little amount of work is the work for one pancake. And that's going to be force or weight times the distance it has to go. So what is the weight of the pancake in pounds? Well, it's going to be the density of the water times the volume, right? 62.5 times the volume of water, which is pi, 25 minus y squared. Delta y. So that's the weight, the weight of the pancake or the force required to lift it, right? And then how far is it going to go? Yeah, the distance it has to go is y, right? It has to go a distance of y. Uh, one question. Why is it y and not 5 minus y? Okay, because what is the y coordinate the way I've drawn this? My coordinate system, right? So it's from here to here. This is the distance that it has to go, right? Is that 5 minus y? So y is 0 here, and it's increasing this way. If I put, yeah, if, if I put my origin down here, it'd be 5 minus y, but then my equation in my circle wouldn't be this be like x squared plus y minus 5 squared equals 25. So the distance it has to go, this is the distance that the layer has to go from here to here, and that's y. Okay, so we're going to, to get the total work done, to empty this. The total work then to, to empty this is going to be the sum of all the bits of work. So it's going to be 62.5 
pi times 25 minus y squared times y dy from what to what? 0 to 5. Questions on this one? Anybody? Okay, so let's do the cone and then we'll go on to new stuff. Last chance, questions on this one? Okay, so we got a cone. Hot chocolate. Okay, and it has a height of six meters. And a radius of two meters. And it's filled with five meters of hot chocolate. Okay. And And so that's the surface of it. Find the work required to empty the tank by pumping the hot chocolate over the top of the tank. So we got to get all the hot chocolate out the top of the tank. Okay. <clears throat> and the density, and this is they're giving us mass density, mass density 1010 kilograms per meter cubed. And then it wants to include units on this. Okay, so what's going to be the strategy for this? Find the volume of the cone, right? Find the volume of all the hot chocolate. And then find the work to get all that hot chocolate out, right? Okay, find the volume of all the hot chocolate. One third pi r squared h. So one third pi, five squared, or sorry, whatever the radius is, times five, right? Am I wasting my time up here? Are you guys, does this help when I go over homework problems? I feel like it's pretty quiet. Is this right? Why not? Okay, but that, that's taken care of by this, this formula gets the volume of that for changing radius is volume of a cone. Right? Takes care of a changing radius. So this is the volume of all the hot chocolate. Don't we need that to do this? Right. Finding the volume of the hot chocolate is 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 uh, irrelevant because the work that it takes to get the hot chocolate out of the bottom it, it has to go a further distance, right? Than the than the than the work at the the work at the top of the hot chocolate near the top is going to take less distance to get out of there. So this this is uh, tells us nothing. It's irrelevant, right? With these emptying tanks, you always have to find an element for which you can calculate an amount of work. That means an element where it all travels the same distance. So what kind of element is that? This is a pan so right. So if you take a horizontal slice, you're going to get a pancake in this case. Do you always get pancakes? No, you had a rectangular fish tank, you have troughs. Those don't give you pancakes, right? So whatever you get when you do a horizontal slice, that's going to be your element. 
So volume is, volume of a pancake is, again, pi r squared h. So we can set up our axes again here like this. So maybe on this one, it may be easier to make our axis this way. Frame of reference, put the frame of reference at the bottom, and then that might save us some work here. So we can we can do that. Where our frame of reference of the origin is at the at the uh, the vertex of the cone. So what determines the radius of our typical pancake? So what's going to determine that radius of our typical pancake? value of x, right? So the, yeah, exactly. So this x coordinate is the radius of our pancake. So that's x. So we do pi x squared h, okay? What is h? Delta x? Delta y? So now we need to get x in terms of y. We need to get x in terms of y. What is going to determine that relationship so we can get x in terms of y? Just in the gen most general of terms. He said it's a line. Agree with that? Is it a circle? No, the side of the cone is not circular or curved, right? The side of the cone is linear. So that radius is, is on a constant rate or a linear... Uh, linear edge, right? Side of a cone has a linear edge. So we need the relationship of y and x for this line. So this is a line right here in x and y. So, Ruth, what are you saying? So this point here is the point... 2 comma 6. Agree? Cool. All right. And this is the point. So we got two points, and we know it's a line. So what is your method for finding the equation of a line for two points? So y equals what? For this one? It's really easy. y equals 3 times x, right? y is always 3 times as much as x plus 0. But we need x in terms of y. So what's x in terms of y? y over 3 squared. How's the volume? Does it make sense? Radius is the x-coordinate. We, we, our height is delta y, so we need that x-coordinate in terms of y. So we get the equation of the line, y equals 3x, so x equals y over 3. Okay, so now we're moving on to... We want a little bit of work, which is force or the weight of that, right? The force is the weight of that pancake times the distance it has to go. So what's the force? The force is going to be mass density. But we need weight density. So how do we get weight density? How do we get from kilograms to newtons times g, right? This is kind of like mg, but it's a density, mass density times 9.8, all right, times our volume. Will give us the weight, right, or the force. So that the, what I've written so far with the volume, so mass density times 9.8 gives weight density times volume gives weight, and that's the force. What's the distance now it has to go? Why? Is it why? So the distance this has to go to get out the top of the tank. I heard y, I've heard y plus 1. Neither are correct. She wants 6 minus y. Mitch likes 6 minus y. He likes 6 minus y. Why is it? Well, where's this going? This is going to, needs to get to here. That's D. What is this? This is y here. Do you see that it's 6 minus y? No? Yep, 6 minus y. 
So total work is integral of 1010 10 times 9.8 times the volume gives the weight or the force times 6 minus y dy to get everything in there. And we're going to integrate from what to what? When we integrate, we're asking, we want to get all the little, all the elements, right? All the elements. So where, for what values of y covers all the elements? 0 to 6. 0 to 5. 0 to 5. It only goes up to 5, right? So when we're, we're doing the limits of integration, we're asking which pancakes, what y values are the pancakes that we want? So we want pancakes starting at 0 all the way up to 5. That's where the, that's where the chocolate milk is. So the range from 0 to 5. Okay, questions on that one? Last chance. Okay, so you start to see start to see this pattern with integration. It's the same thing over and over again. If you want the total volume of something, what do you do? Just in very general terms. Break it up into smaller sections that you can add up. And what smaller you can integrate that you can but smaller what's? Pancakes or smaller rectangles or smaller cubes or. And what about those? If you want volume, what about those are you going to sum up? They're volumes. The vol the volumes right. right. But there, there's lots. So for, for a cube or a pancake, we can co compute the work, we can compute the weight, we can compute the volume. So it's important that if you're talking about if you want the total volume, then you're going to do integrate of. A bunch of little volumes. Bunch of little volumes, right. And if you want the total work, you're going to sum together a bunch of little bits of work. All right? And if you want the total area of a region, go ahead. Ariane, go ahead. We're going to sum up a bunch of little areas, right? We did like strips, OK? So, so, on the, so this principle is really important. So on the exam, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a whole new context, something different that you haven't seen before. And you have to apply this principle. Because it's like, by now, it's, it should be feeling like, now that we've done these emptying the tanks and lifting the chain and all the areas and the volumes, there's, there's a pattern to this, OK? And it's kind of like the same thing over and over again. So let's practice that here. So we'll practice that with hydrostatic force. I'm going to give you the setup for hydrostatic force. And then you're going to do the first example problem. So here's. Here's hydrostatic force. So hydrostatic force is like when you have something submerged in a liquid, and you want to get the total force on um, on a two-dimensional region. Okay, two-dimensional force on a region. So what will the strategy be for that? What will the strategy be for finding the total hydrostatic force on a region that's submerged underwater or under some fluid? Just in the total force. Yeah, we want the total force on so like often there's like plates or like maybe there's a ship. Okay, so there's a sunken ship. There's a wreck, right? Way under the water. And so then there's a window. And we want the total force on that window. The total force of the pressure of the, you know, the, pre the water, there's water pressure there. And that pressure applies a force to that window. So just <clears throat> in the most general sense, how are we going to get the total force on that window? So Hunter's got it. Very on. OK, and then? Right. So we're going to find the force on some element, some piece of that. We're going to find force, and then we're going to add up all the forces, right? So that's this.
right? So the given region R, the total force on R is going to be the integral of lots of little forces, just like we've been talking about, right? So why is integration necessary? Does anyone know with hydrostatic force? Why, why, why would we need to break it up into little pieces to find? Why can't we just find the overall force in, one's, in one formula? Alvaro? Okay, so when I'm asking why, yeah, that's true. Why do we have to do that? Why can't we just take the whole area of the window on the ship and just get the force? What, what is, yeah? Okay, so in, so yes, give me more specific. Why is the force not equal? Yeah, exactly. Why does the force vary on that window? Because of the depth. What happens when you go deeper? More pressure. more pressure, right? So as you go deeper, there's more pressure, and so then, then fluid exerts more of a force as you go deeper. So what kind of elements then are we going to do, say on a window like this, what kind of elements are we going to choose so, such that we can calculate a little bit of force? She wants horizontal, so Ariana, you're saying horizontal. So for a, at a horizontal level, could we get the amount of force? Why? Because we're not changing the depth, right? Good. Yeah. So we're going to look at a little horizontal piece, and we're going to calculate the force on that. All right, so pressure on R varies with depth, and so here's how it works. Pressure is weight density times depth. So weight density is either newtons per meters cubed or pounds per foot cubed. That's a property of the fluid. All right. So the weight density is a property of the fluid that we're in. And then depth is how far down below the surface that you are. So here's that formula. And the weight density is rho, Greek rho. Okay. So pressure equals rho times depth. And so then what, what units will we get for pressure? What are the units for pressure if it's weight density times depth? Say newtons per meter cubed times meters. What are we going to get? Newton per meter squared. So how are we going to get force then? So we've got the pressure in newtons per meter squared. To get force, we're going to do what? Multiply by area. So when you take your uh, pressure, which is newtons per meter squared or pounds per foot squared, multiplied by area, you're going to get force. So that, so this, this combined with all this practice or all these problems we've done for the last two weeks. You have the tools, and you, you can you can do a hydrostatic force problem without me doing one. That's what I what's, and that's going to be the idea of the test. I'm going to give you some something new. I'm going to get, on the test. I'll give you some a whole new context, and you're gonna you're gonna have to figure out what the you know what the total amount of whatever whatever it is is in the situation. Okay, are we good with the basic setup of hydrostatic force? Any questions? Okay, so find the total force on the triangular plate submerged in the water as shown. The top is 5 meters below the surface. The width is 4 meters at the top, and it's a triangle, and it's 8 meters tall. So find the total force on the plate. Go. You can do it.
Remember for water, what's the mass density for water? 1,000? 1,000 kilogram per meter cubed. That's the mass density, right? Kilograms. So I, there's, let's just all do it. So we all do it the same way. You, so some possible choices for your frame of reference would be to make your origin here or here or here. So let's do this. There's kind of, it's kind of like there's, there's uh, pros and cons to each one. So by, by moving the frame of reference, it makes another it might make another part of the problem easier, but then it makes another part harder. So I think with hydrostatic force, it's safe. It's pretty safe to put your point of reference on the surface of the water. That's helpful. Okay, so, and what's the depth going to be? So we're going to have our typical, so the way that I've done the frame of reference, the depth is simply, why? So as we said earlier, force changes with depth, so we're going to, for a, we're going to get an element for a constant depth, so like a strip, horizontal strip, and that the pressure will all be the same on that horizontal strip. And so then we can calculate the force on that strip and then add up all the strips. So the pressure is going to be our rho, which is going to be 1,000 times 9.8 times the depth, which is y. So then the force, so a little bit of force is going to be pressure times a little bit of area. So the pressure we have right here. So that's our pressure times the area. And what is the area of our elements, just in general terms? Rectangle, right? Base times height. What's the height of it? Delta y. So what's the base. The base is this right here. So 2x, right? Is it isn't that width of that rectangle 2x? Because from here to here is x, but now we need it's going to be 2x. But we need that we need x in terms of y. 
that's what the blue line is, right? That's what the blue line is. It's going to give us the relationship of x and y. So when x is what? Uh, 2, y is 5. See that? When x is 2, y is 5. This is the point 2, 5. And when x is 0, y is 13. Those are our two points, 2, 5 and 0, 13. Define this edge of this plate, that blue line. So rate of change is 8 over negative 2, negative 4. So y equals negative 4x. Here we have the y-intercept. What is it, 13? So negative 4x plus 13. We can just write it down. If we didn't have the y, if the y-intercept wasn't our, one of our two points, we could use point-slope form or whatever way you want to figure that out. But we need x in terms of y, so what's that? y minus 13 over negative 4. That's what this is. Now, another way that you could have done this, you could have done it without this line. You could have just said, what's my width at different distances? So, like, for instance, at, uh, at a depth of 5, when y is 5, the width is 4. When y is 13, the width is 0. And you could have used those points and just directly gotten the width instead of, oh, wait, it's two times, right? Did I, it's in the wrong place. Sorry, that's totally wrong. This is totally wrong. This was the pressure. So pressure times 2 times x. That's our little bit of force on the typical strip. OK. Any questions on that? Yeah. Yeah, let's let's finish it and then we'll go and then we'll do a different then we'll talk about different frame reference. So let's finish this version. This questions on this version. Say it again? These are all positive y's because positive y is down. I'm I'm setting positive y to be downward so that all the, we're all in positive territory here for both for both uh, variables. Is that? Yeah, so you are making Yeah, I'm, I'm making that, I, I'm forcing it to be positive wise down. Yep. Other questions on this? So now we're ready to get the total force. Total force is now what? We're going to sum up now all the little bits of force. Which is, I'll write the whole thing out now. Uh, pressure is rho. That's our rho. Weight density times depth. Y. y. Times. Times area, right? And the area was 2 times y minus 13 over negative 4. So it's a y. This whole thing is area. OK, now from what to what? From what to what? 5 to 13. Does it give a negative answer? Yeah, 
No, because we're not moving. So the del that's we're not going to do. That's when we're actually moving, like when we're doing a distance that we're moving. Okay. This is just to get yeah. to get area that's going to be positive. Um, so are we sh are we sure that's negative? Because you got you got two times. This is positive. This term is positive. So let's let's put it in Wolfram Alpha and see what happens. The whole thing is positive. Okay, let's con yeah, but you're still doing let's you're confirm doing it. Minus a positive number. All right, zero minus a positive number. Maybe you're getting 13 minus a positive number. I'm sorry, zero minus a positive number. Why am I using this? I'm just So I'm just now I'm just going to change y to x, right? That's that's fair. That won't confuse you. Now that we have the integral set, I'm just going to change all my y's to x's. It's just a symbol, right? Positive. Did I get it right? Oh, an x. All right, so so units. So let's talk about units here. So if, uh, what would this be for force? Units are, and uh, we're in metric. So it'd be newtons. So 1.2 times 10 to the sixth. Is what? So what would be a more appropriate unit here? Kilonewtons. So it would be times 10 to the third kilonewtons, which would be 1,202 kilonewtons. Or 1.202 meganewtons. Okay. Questions? Did anyone get it before I did it? Close? Everyone was close? <laughs> Just everything was right but the area? Yeah, the area and the fact that we went negative, but if we were still... You understand what the area is? 2x times delta y, right? Oh, yeah, no, yeah, we we'll get that. Yeah, we'll got it. Yeah. Other questions or... Okay, so let's let's practice more. Any questions? Oh, you asked about frame of reference. Shoot, I erased it. So what now what Alternative frame of reference did you want to use, Ariane? At the here or at the bottom? Here. Okay. So what? You, what was the question again? Yep. What should it be? Why do you want it to be four minus x? Because it's now our typical our typical strip is here. What's the width of that? Is it two x still? You, are you sure? Okay. No. So what would be different here? So we have force equals rho d a. Would rho be different than the last time we did it? 
No, it's still it'd still be 9800, right? That's still be the same. Would A be different? It would because it'd still be 2x delta y, but now x is a function of this would be a different x is a function of y, right? So that the the line that you'd get would be a different line. Now your points would be uh, 2, 0, and 0, 8. You'd have different points. You'd have a different equation. So this would be different. That would be different. And then what about the depth? Would the depth be different? Now your depth would be y plus 1. Because it would be whatever the y coordinate is, or no, what, plus, five. plus five. Sorry, plus five. He 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 had it right in his mind. He just didn't know the number. Yeah. yeah. So it would be whatever the y coordinate is plus an additional five would be how far that strip is underwater. So you'd ha so you have a different depth y plus five. You'd have a different x according to this line now, according to these two points. But you'd get the same same total force. I mean, in the end, you get the same force. Oh, and the right. Let's so let's do it. Here we go. Okay, so we're gonna go from now. Our bounds are gonna go from what to what? Zero to eight. Okay. Yep. We're gonna go from zero to eight. It's gonna be a thousand times nine point eight again. Times. Two. So let's not make this confusing. Let's switch back to y's here. There we go. Why didn't that work? We can do with x in the ah, thank you. There we go. Okay. Okay. So it's going to be times 2y still. No, that, that was my depth, right? So this is the y plus 5. And then finally, we have a different equation of our line. So what will it be? y will be negative 4x plus 8. 2, 0, 0, 8. So x equals y minus 8 over negative 4. Ah, last. y minus 8 divided by negative 4. Y. Same answer. See what happened? So the depth changed to y plus 5 because our y equals 0 is here. So our depth is always from the surface. This reflects the new equation of the line according to our new, um, our new uh, coordinate system. But pressure is the same. Or, sorry, total force on the plate is the same. Any questions? Okay, let's practice. So my my experience is that these are some of the hardest problems of the semester. So let's do more practice. This one. So an oil tanker has a cylindrical shape with a diameter. So you've seen an oil tanker. They're like the cylinders lie on their side on the flatbed of the truck. I'll, I'll picture in a second. Okay, so the diameter is 12 feet, the length is 74 feet. It's filled three-fourths of its height with gasoline, which has a density of 44.9 pounds per foot cube. We want to find the total force of the gas on the circular end of the tank, like at the back of the truck, right? So how, what's the force of the gas on the circular side of the tank? And then how much work would be required to remove all the gas from a valve at the top of the tanker?
Should we make it a quiz for credit? Help boost your grade? Not confident enough yet? All right, then we'll have our quiz at the beginning of class tomorrow. So before you get too deep into it, let's talk about this. The force on the side of the tanker, would it be different if the tanker were half as long? The hydrostatic force on this circular, that's what we're asking about. The hydrostatic force on this circular plate right here. Would it be different if the tanker were half as long, twice as long? More pressure if it's the longer? So the question, so this is kind of the question. At 10 feet, 10 feet below the surface in my swimming pool, is the pressure different than 10 feet below the surface in the ocean? Same or different? Is the amount of water out to the out in different directions change the pressure at 10 feet? Isn't water pressure equal in all distances? All yeah, it's all only a function of what's above. That's why it's only a function of depth. So at 10 feet in my swimming pool, the water pressure is the same as at 10 feet in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Doesn't matter how, how wide the water goes out. So does the length of the ta tanker matter for the pressure on the, the end? No, it doesn't matter. All we care about is just, you're just looking at the end of that tanker. It doesn't matter that it's 74 feet long. Now, when you do the work, 74 feet is going to be important, right? But for that hydrostatic force on that back end of the cylinder, this plate right here, this circular end, the 74 feet, it doesn't matter if it's 74 feet or 10 feet or 1,000 feet long, okay? Pressure is the same. Okay, well, pretend it's a quiz. You got to get it right before I start doing it. You got to get it right. Get in that mindset. Okay. Don't wait for me to, to correct all your mistakes. Do it right. So let's talk about frame of reference. Let's, sorry to interrupt you again, but let's, so we do all the same frame of reference. We could choose the frame of reference at the top. Um, or the top of the, of the actual fluid or the center of the circle. Both, 
all have advantages and disadvantages. Very top? Okay, so when you do the very top, then you just got to know that your depth, wherever, whatever slice you pick, your depth is when your slice to here, not to, the, not to where you picked your frame of reference, right? The depth of the slice is to the surface. So do we want to do the top? Yeah, it's fine. I think, so I, I would say either the top or the, or the center of the circle would be the best choices. But now when you do it in the top, you've got to get the right equation of the circle. Your center of your circle is not at the origin. You see? So when you do you make your frame of reference to the top, you've got to deal with the depth of the, the, the surface of the water being down here and the center of your circle being down here. That's fine. You just got to make sure you accommodate for both those things. Center of the circle? Yeah. Okay, so now you're going to change your mind. So now, that's fine. That's great. So let's make this frame of reference the center of the circle. Great. Great. Awesome. Frame of reference, center of the circle. I will draw that. I assume we still want Y down and X to the right. Is that right? Okay, that's how we'll do it. Don't forget that. That's the whole. That's the whole gist. Okay, let's let's do the pressure one. Who thinks they got it? Who thinks they got it right? First try, before I do it. All right, here we go. So uh, pressure equals rho d, right? So we've got the weight density, 44.9. That's done. All right, so times depth. So here's our typical slight, typical strip with uh, constant pressure. What is the depth of that strip? Y is this dimension right here from the strip to the x-axis is Y. But that's not our depth, right? Our depth is more than that, this much more, which is how much? That's three. One quarter of the whole depth. So depth is? For the frame of reference that you guys chose, the depth of our typical strip is y plus 3. 3 more than the y coordinate. Okay, and so then our little bit of force is? Pressure times a little bit of area. And a little bit of area is base times height. And the base is 2x. The height is delta y. So now we've got to get x in terms of y. x in terms of y is according to what? Circle. Okay. That circle is? This was why you chose this frame of reference for this part right here to make it easy. So that circle is? x squared plus y squared equals 36. So x equals square root of 36 minus y squared, which goes there. So that is our little bit of, so that's our little bit of work, total work, sorry, total, total force. That's our little bit of force. 
That's the force of the gasoline on just a typical strip, right? So the total force is going to be the sum of 44.9 times y plus 3 times 2 times square root of 36 minus y squared is the uh, times dy is the area. From what to what? Negative 3 to 6. Anyone get it? First try. Okay, uh, any, first of all, before we talk about the antiderivative of that, let's, uh, any questions? Any questions about setting that up? What's that? So, the, so the bounds go back to your elements, your typical elements. We want to cover all of them. So your bounds are always about including every typical element. Right? So what are our typical elements? The first one is at the surface, and then the last one is at the lowest depth. Right? So what is the surface? What y value is the surface? If this is y equals 0 and positive goes down this way, then that first strip right at the surface is y equals negative 3. That's our first typical strip. And then we're going to add up all the forces for the typical strips down to y equals right there, which is 6. So the bounds of integration are always about um, your typical elements, covering all your typical elements from the beginning to the end. So that's from the surface to there. So that's y equals negative 3, and that's y equals 6. Is it better? Other questions? Okay, so what about doing this antiderivative? We see, we're actually, we have to do two, right? Because the, we'll have y times this, and then we'll have 3 times everything else. So y times this, how do we do that antiderivative? So we'd have 44.9 times y times 2 times this radical dy. How would we do that? y times square root of 36 minus y squared. Antiderivative. Please know that. Undoing chain rule, right? Undoing chain rule. Y is essentially the derivative of what you have underneath here. So it would be 36 minus y squared to the 3 halves. 3 halves. 36 minus y squared to the 3 halves would be your, like, or 2 thirds times that to the 3 halves would be your initial guess. And then you'd also need a what, negative 1 half with it. Because you got a negative 2y, so you need a negative 1 half. All right, what about 3 times that thing? So this one would be undoing chain. And then this one, this, this one, 44.9 times 3 times 2 times the square root would be Anyone recognize what that would be? What technique? Table. Remember? A squared minus x squared, x squared minus a squared. Remember those? This would be a table. Table one. Tables, we use the tables for like a squared minus x squared, a squared plus x squared, those, all those forms are the most common use for the table. All right, do we have time to do the work one? Hopefully, have you already started the work? Quick, go, do it. So if you've already... How many people have finished the work from that? How many people have finished the work? Okay, go keep going on. In just a couple minutes, I'll just start putting it up there, and you can check your work against it. Y times square root of 36 minus y squared? It's exactly undoing the chain rule. It's perfectly undoing the chain rule. What does the chain rule give us? Right. 
So essentially, it's just that we Okay, before I erase what's on the board, I want to make sure you understand what I was talking about with the antiderivative. So, when you multiply this out, you get two different terms. Y times everything else and 3 times everything else. So I wrote it out here. Y times everything plus 3 times everything. So that's what I meant. So this first one, when you have Y times the square root, you can do undoing chain. And when you have 3 times the square root, that's the table here. So you, you use both because there's two terms. I want to make sure everyone understood that. Are we good? Mm -hmm. Matt? Okay. So now I'll start erasing and keep working. And I'll start, I'll start putting it up. You can keep working and look as you... Look as you want.
I went off the screen. <laughs> okay. So total work. Now we've got. Yikes. <laughs> Too wide here. All right. This is still 2x, right? This is 74, and this is delta y still. Good so far? Forces weight. So I do forty four times the volume. And what's the depth? Y plus six. Did you get it? Is that what you got? Okay, here's the total work. Force times distance. D knows distance it has to travel, not depth. Distance it has to travel. So the force is volume times weight density. So 44.9 times the volume, which is 2x. X is the same as before, square root of 36 minus y squared, times the little change in y, that's part of the volume, and then times 74, that's part of the volume, and then uh, y plus 6 now is the distance each layer has to move. It's y plus all the way to the top is plus 6. And then from again from negative 3 to 6. You need a different circle that changes the equation of your circle. You're going to put the frame of reference here? Yeah. Well, now your center of your circle would be y minus 3 squared plus x squared equals 36. Your circle changes. It's no longer x squared plus y squared equals 
Yeah, so it's no longer x squared plus y squared equals 36. It'd be x squared plus quantity y minus 3 squared equals 36. Because your center would be center of your circle would be 0, 3 instead of 0, 0. So you'd have y minus 3 squared. Question in the back? Yeah, well, I was just going to ask you to point that out. The, the other prior reference? What's that? You mean? The, the, the circle, what you were just explaining to him. So he wanted the frame of reference to be here at the top surface right here. Yeah. So what would change? Your equation of your circle would change. Yeah. And the uh, this would change to what? What would it change to? Y plus 3, and your bounds would also change. So let's write, write it out. Um, the volume would be the same, right? It'd still be 2x times 74 times delta y, so I'll erase this. So as you're packing up, I'll write what the integral would be with a different frame of reference. So now from this point, frame of reference b. So the, the equation of the circle, if you chose your frame of reference to be here now instead, the equation of the circle would be x squared plus y minus 3, because it's in positive territory. That would be the equation of your circle. So we'd have the total work would be the integral from what to what? 0 to 9 now. 44.9 times 2 times the square root of 36 minus y minus 3 squared times 74. Now what's, this, what's the distance that everything has to move now? If y is here, y plus 3 now. dy. So that would be an alternate way. If your frame of reference was at the here, at the top of the surface of the gas. And explain again why is y minus 3 Because this equation of the circle is different now. Positive y is going down. So this is positive. This is the point zero three, and that's your center. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll do we'll have web work.